can't touch the ground My ears can't hear the sound of the tongue Reach the sky, we'll fly up to the moon I know we'll be there soon, wait and see Hello everyone. Today I am doing a get ready with me makeup video showing how I go from no makeup to this completed look. I hope you enjoy it and if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below. I am starting this part of the video barefaced. I have on just moisturizer. Let me show you my skin up close. I have red spots, I have dark spots, I have wrinkles, I have pores. Uh, I'm 62, so I have aging. <laughs> I'm going to be using powder foundation, powder eyeshadows, powder blush, and then lip gloss and an eye pencil. Is that everything? I think so. Okay. Brushes. Oh, let's take the plastic off the brushes. Now I'm going to use mostly Sigma brushes today. Okay. I want to do light to medium coverage because this is a day look, but I want it to be the kind of look that will also work at night. That's why I want to do dra dramatic eyes. So I'm doing a light amount of coverage right now, just all over. And then I will add more if, where I need it. Because I don't need it as much in some places as in others. I need it where the red spots are. over my eyes. I do not use a primer on my eyelids. I like to use whatever powder foundation I'm using. Now, I do not put powder foundation directly under my eyes. I don't put anything there. I do have darkness. I just leave it. Now, I do put a little bit here up into it slightly because I do apply blush there and I don't want it to catch on to the moisturizer. So I will apply this up, as you can see, about this far. But not all the way under. I've just found that any makeup, whether it is a cream-based or a powder-based, emphasizes my wrinkles and the crepey skin. I prefer it to look luminous. In fact, I prefer the overall look to be luminous, not powdery. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like it. It looks skin-like. Looks very skin-like. I do want to do some more in certain areas where I still have a little bit of redness. So I think I'm going to use this brush here. I do wish this had a mirror, but then you couldn't see the color through the lid. This is a triangle shape. I need to take it down my neck. Going to start with this color here, this brown. I'm going to put it in my crease area. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this guard 
I line it up with the end of my eyebrow. So I'm going to do this. It also, I'm putting it all over my lid. dark. Before I forget, I'm going to wipe this off here. That looks pretty even. Okay, now I want to take the darker of these colors. So I started with this one. Now I'm going to this one. All right, this one, I'm going to use this size. in the dark color. Are they even? They're even. Very dramatic. Not what I want yet because it's so dark, but I'm hoping I can blend it. But I do like the colors together very much. I'm red in here because I pushed too hard when I was using my brush to conceal the, the, the darkness and I created redness, but hopefully that will fade eventually. Okay. Now I want to take this, uh, the medium color and the darker color, I want to sweep it underneath my eyelashes down below. And that's what I wanted to use that smudge brush for. Where is that? This brush. So I'm doing it to the middle. I'm not going to put the dark one. I'm just going to put that medium tone, the one that was in the that I started with, that's in my crease and all over my lid. I'm ready to blend. So I'm going to use this brush, which is the one I applied the first shade, that medium tone shade. Although I think I'm going to use this because this works beautifully for actually cleaning the brush. And that's got a lot of this on it. <laughs> so now I want to brush underneath. I'm brushing, I'm cleaning it off again on this. I'm going to try to swirl it very, very, very gently. I mean very gently. Cleaning it off again. I'm going to apply a little bit more foundation, but I'm going to actually use my blending brush, so I'm going to clean it very well on this cloth. These work beautifully. I don't want any brown. I want all foundation, and I want to be able to apply it little by little. Just spot it. Where it's red, where I've made it red from the rubbing, right? Gently. But I also want to put it actually on the line. Cleaning it again. I'm now going to take the first shade that I started with, cleaning my brush because I want to take off the foundation. I'm going to use this handy brush yet again. And I want to go over that area just to bring that color back. 
and to blend the dark with it. There we go. The foundation over it had changed the color, so this brought it back. That's why I really don't like to use foundation to set my eyeshadow. It, it puts color over it. Smudge brush, again with that medium color. I'm going to put it under here. A bit lower. I'm experimenting. This is complete experiment because I've never worn it this low. I'm going to clean it up, but... Now I'm cleaning my blending brush. Soften it. Cleaned it again. I want to take this and just I believe I'm ready for eye pencil. So this is in the color well it doesn't say a color. It's brown, but it's a dark brown. So I just want to line my eyes. I don't want to do a wing or anything like that and then I'm going to smudge it. I'm trying to keep it as close to my trying to keep it as close to my lashes as possible, but I do uh, I will be smudging it so. I'm making it a little thicker on the outer corners. I'm now going to take it under the outer one third. Now my trusty smudge brush. Next is mascara. The primer is first, that's this side. I'm going to use this mirror again. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's a short wand a spoolie and it has white gooey substance. I believe it said let it wait 30 seconds. That oh, was on the box. I believe you're supposed to let it wait after you apply it, let it dry for about 30 seconds before you apply the mascara. But I'm going to put lots of this on. So I will probably speed this up as well. myself. I am growing my nails out for the first time in goodness gracious. I am 62. The last time I had long nails was just before I became a an editorial assistant at a local magazine in 1984. And once I started in the business, I realized I was going to be typing all the time on a computer, and I s noticed how my nails would make my fingers slide on the keys. And I was so concerned about being efficient and moving quickly. I remembered that when I was young, I had a piano teacher who, if my nails clicked on the keys, I was told, they're too long, cut your nails. So I, I did it the same way. I made sure my nails would never click on the keyboard. And that, I knew then I was, as quick I could, as I could be, and I've kept my nails that short ever since until recently I thought, just slow down a little bit and you can have nice long nails if you can 
keep them that way. I'm just so used to using my nails to open things and because then I just chop them off again anyway. But I thought it would be fun to grow them out. So I hit myself with my nails. I'm not used to them. I also found some all natural nail polish and remover that I'm looking forward to trying. I have not tried them yet. I haven't worn nail polish in, oh gosh, more than 10 years. I gave it up for health reasons. Now they're making them a lot less toxic. They're not perfect. Of course, it's better not to wear any, but I thought it would be fun to occasionally wear nail polish. I miss it. I miss just being able to have fun and, you know, color my nails. Now we put on the mascara, which is on this side. Here we go. Mm, I hope I can do it like I did it the first time. Look at that. Can you see that so far? It's lengthening definitely. makes them thicker and longer. Amazing. It's really, it really, it works. It works. Um, in fact, I want to comb it out a little because it's so long. They're so long, they don't, they don't need to be that long. Look at that. Is that amazing? Look at that. I want to make it a little bit more natural. My goodness, they're still long. They look like I have false lashes on. This is amazing for me. So you can see I have not applied the mascara to my left side yet. Look at the difference with primer and mascara and without. This is the side where the lashes want to stick straight out and fall down. So it's my challenge side. I don't really need a second coat, but I'm just trying to show you all. So I don't think I would use this much in real life. They're so long. We'll see. I, I think maybe for night I would, but I don't know. I don't think I'll use the primer on my lower lashes. I don't, I don't think I want them long. I just want them darkened. So I'm just going to the mascara side. I'm going to be using a powder blush. I'm wrong, this was a cream blush. I forgot. It is both a cheek color and a lip color. I haven't decided what my lip color is going to be yet. Maybe I'll use this. I'm going to use this mirror. So you can see I'm going a little bit up into my lower eye area, that's why I wanted to make sure I had foundation there. Actually, it wouldn't have mattered since I'm using cream. Oh, I 
I've forgotten. This is wonderful. I love this color and the app. Look how it um, has a slight, I don't know, glow to it. Just, I really like that blush. That's so pretty. Makes me look like my cheekbones are much higher than they are. Very pretty. Okay, I'm going to take this onto my forehead to look like I am sun-touched. I don't need to take it onto my nose because I naturally have some pink showing through. <laughs> the last thing I'm going to do before lip color is something that's probably going to surprise many of you who have followed me for years. I, I have always had very dry skin around my eyes, very dry skin since uh, I was young, since I was a teenager in high school. So I finally found Shea Butter, which I still use, I do, I do still use, but I have also been using petroleum jelly. The difference is this is triple purified petroleum jelly. The Environmental Working Group rates it very well. It rates it a one. I think they have one to 10. One and two are the lowest possible rating you can get unless you are EWG verified. Actually rates the same as shea butter. Shea butter rates one at Environmental Working Group at their skin deep database and so does petroleum jelly. This one, which is triple purified. So why would I use this anyway if I already know I like shea butter? Because in the last several years I found out I am allergic, I or became allergic to several all natural products, including coconut oil. I don't think I'm allergic to shea butter, but I don't want to become allergic to shea butter, so I now rotate. You don't want to be putting on your skin things that cause an allergic reaction, not just because it looks terrible and it feels terrible, but because it's very bad for the immune system. So that's why I'm using this uh, petroleum jelly, or petrolatum is the other name you'll hear. So that's what I'm going to use today instead of shea butter. The other thing you have seen me do before is spritz, but I'm going to spritz now because I want to lock in the moisture. Petrolatum or petroleum jelly, if it's triple purified, make sure you get that. I will link all of these products on my blog. Uh, is a wonderful product for holding moisture in the skin. Much like oil or shea butter, none of them are actual moisturizers, they're just efficient at holding moisture in the skin, but you have to have moisture in your skin. And right now my skin is very dry because I've been rubbing it and rubbing it. So I want to apply some moisture and then seal it with the shea butter. Not the shea butter, the petroleum jelly. The other reason why I'm spritzing is because it sets the makeup. It beautifully sets powder foundation. It makes it blend with my skin or meld with my skin and make it look even more skin-like. But I'm telling you, this really looks quite skin-like to me. I'm going to show you up close. And this is before I've spritzed it. So I'm very happy with this powder foundation. So let's spritz. Oh, this is just purified water, that's it. Now, my fan. This works beautifully. Oop. But I want to put on my... I don't need very much. I, I've got much more than I need, and I'm going to put that on the back of my hand. And apply it just here where I'm dry and where I have the wrinkles and take it up to this wrinkle that is a smile line that is the one that I kept getting confused. Was that a wrinkle or was that 
cosmetic product in my, on my skin. So I wiped my finger off and cleaned it because I went up to the dark part of my shadow, eyeshadow. So now I'm applying it here. So this is how I make powder foundation work around my wrinkle area here. This acts like a, well, it gives a luminous look to your cheeks. And if I didn't have a luminous sh uh, cheek blush on, it would work well to apply a little bit on my cheeks, but I don't need to. So there we go. I'm going to let that set for about 15 minutes. First, I want to dry the rest of my face, especially my mascara, because it would have gotten spritzed. I am back. It has been at least 20 minutes, more than 15. I looked in the mirror uh, in the window, in the south facing window, and I'm very happy with it. These eyelashes I am thrilled with. I didn't even use an eyelash curler, and I'm telling you, these usually are straight on this side. So it's amazing. So now what I need to do is I'm going to clean off my fingertips. Now I'm going to wipe my finger every time on a Kleenex, a clean Kleenex. And that just is enough for me. I like to leave it a bit luminous. It will match the rest of my skin. I think I want to apply this with a lip brush because I have one here somewhere. Is this it? See what that's like because that way it's a detailed lip brush. I want to rim my edges first. Here, right here, I've lost color in my lips. I'm going to stay with this lip color. I just think it looks lovely. However, I think I'm going to add a gloss. This is a lip plumping line smoothing gloss. Let me show you what this looks like without it. Now, let's plump it up, because I like my lips to look bigger than they are, since my lower lip is bigger than my upper lip. Is that, that's probably what most people, but I always thought it'd be fun to have a bigger upper lip. I am not finished because I forgot to set my eyeshadow to keep it from creasing. Luckily it has not creased yet. Normally I would do this before I put on the mascara, but I have already put on the mascara. So this is powder. It is wonderful. I'm allergic to some of these. I've tried several of these. They are colorless. Actually, there's a plastic, and I need to shake it into my palm just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way, a very long way. I don't need very much, especially since it's just my eyes. And where is my that trusty shading blending brush? I need to clean it off on my wonderful cleaning cloth. I don't, don't want any foundation, nothing on it gather this on it. Now carefully pat it on. A 
little bit more from my other eye. <laughs> Trying to keep it away from my eyelashes. <laughs> now, this product is wonderful. It really works, and I'm not allergic to it. I've tried others, and I was allergic to them. This one, I'm not. I've used this one for years. Well, that is my finished look. It is very dramatic, definitely. I would not wear this for a casual look, I personally, but for a dressy day look or for definitely evening, I would repeat this makeup. Thank you so much for watching my video and I will talk to you in my next one. Bye-bye.